Hi, my name's Gwem, and welcome back to the Gwembassy. So I recently got a Roland MC202, um, which I was very pleased with. But the tuning, when I got it, I could immediately hear that it was way off. So I did a, a rough um, tuning on it so I could do a few videos. And now I'm about to do a full um, tuning and adjustment on the MC202. And I thought it would be cool to show you guys how I go through the process and maybe you can do the same on your MC202 as well. Let's get into it. Now, before you start any tuning whatsoever on the MC202, you need to set the cal control on the back. Now, the idea of the cal control is that it sets the tuning of the internal touch keyboard here with an external keyboard. Now, I'll just set the cal so it's completely wrong. There we go. So I've, that cal won't be right. So I'm going to press C and tune it with the guitar tuner. There we go. So that we're at C. So everything's great at the moment. But what happens when we connect an external keyboard? Now, most MC202s won't have a socket kit fitted, which, which mine does. But let's just do it the normal C MC202 way to begin with. So I'm connecting the CV gate to this Arturia key step, which is an external keyboard. Then I will press one key and listen to what happens with the note. You'll see that the note does end up in tune, but there's kind of like a little weird slide in pitch at the start. And that happens while the MC202 is adjusting to that external note. So what you want to do is adjust the cowl so that it, it plays the same note all the way through each key press. And I find it's better to do this on a on a higher note. Because it's a bit easier to hear. Now at this point, it seems to be playing one constant note, but it's uh, now no longer in tune, so I can fix that with the tuning knob. But if you do happen to have a socket kit, there's a much more precise way that you can do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to connect the gate signal only. Now when I press a key on the Arturia, it will trigger the last note that the MC202 played. Which in this case is, is that middle C. And I will tune it. There we go, perfect. So the cowl won't quite be right. When I start to use the pitch CV from the Arturia, you'll notice that the the tuning will drift a bit as I insert this plug. Right, there we go. The Arturia is now playing the same C as the MC202. That's in tune. Now when I plug in this external keyboard, it will be slightly out. You can hear, you can hear it and you can also see it on, on the display. So what you want to do to set the cal precisely, if you've got the socket mod, is press that note and tune it with the tuning knob. Now that's exactly correct. Now what I'm, what I'm going to do now is unplug the pitch CV 
that's gone sharp and then I adjust the cowl so that it is in tune again. So that's in tune with the internal keyboard. Then I'll plug this in. And it's also in tune with an external keyboard. And that's how you set the cowl. And then once that is set, you can do the rest of the tuning, which I'll go into now. I've got my oscilloscope here. Now, I think you could probably tune it pretty well without a scope, but since I do have one, um, I'm going to use it. I've got the guitar tuner as well, in case that's required. And we'll just see how it goes. And to open the case, you just need to remove all the knobs and unscrew the back. And I've done this before, and it's a pretty straightforward um, procedure. Now one thing I do want to be sure of is getting this tuning control in the middle because I want to have it so that I can easily reproduce the correct tuning. So I'm going to put it in the middle and try not to disturb it as I pull it off. Now on the back there's seven of these um, screws, I'm going to undo those. Right, now I do want to be careful when I'm removing this case. Because I want to make sure when I'm doing it that I don't damage the wires of my lovely socket extension, which I've probably already seen the video for that. It's available anyway on my channel. So I'm very gently removing this. Okay. There's these four felt dust guards that I'm going to take off as well. I have a feeling it will be easier if I remove this. To remove these screws, I'm holding the post to to stop to stop it spinning. You do need to lift this off because there is some adjustment points and I can already see that they're directly under the like the keyboard board. TM1 is there, so I could have done that without removing the board. Now I need to find IC Four F. I see four is here, so I need pin twelve of I see four. Now, in order to count the pins of ICs, what you do is you look for pin one, which is normally indicated by a dot. Or, or some other kind of notch, and you count anti-clockwise. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. That's there. And I need a ground for this scope. And I think I'll just use one of the um, pots for that. Right, so let's switch it on and see what happens. Okay, we have a a pulse. Let me adjust the scope. Right, that is quite a high voltage pulse. Move the trigger so it stabilizes the wave. All right, so I'm supposed to adjust TM1 so that the period of this pulse 
is um, two milliseconds, and it is actually very close to two milliseconds already. Try and get it even more precise. Yeah, spot on two milliseconds. Now that was the adjustment for the interrupt clock. Now we have to do the tempo clock. I'll switch it off again. Now the tempo clock is pin 11 of IC5. Now this is the tempo clock, so I have to set the tempo to maximum in order to test this. And the tempo is this third wheel here, so that's on maximum, and then it will measure the tempo. Right, that is a little bit fast. So the period is supposed to be 8.3 milliseconds. But I've got 8.8 .8 here. Now in order to adjust the tempo, it's TM2, which is actually right next to TM1. Let's see if we can get that 8.33 seconds. I'm going a bit too far the other way. I'm going to just wind it back. 8. Oh, I've gone too far. It takes a moment for the measurement to adjust on the scope. Okay, we're closer, 8.1 now, that's better than it was. 8.2, two, 8.3, 8.31, I think that's as good as we're gonna get it. It was already very difficult to get it that precise, so I'm gonna leave it there. Now this next one is important, it's the D2A reference voltage and I need to connect digital voltmeter to pin 1 of IC11. But TM3 is by this switch right there, it's bl a blue. And we need 5.333 volts. It's not bad, it's 5.32. I did this with my 303 once and it's very difficult to get 5.33 exactly. Especially 5.333 is even more difficult, but you can probably do better than it than it's on. 5.330 there we go, 5.333 exactly. That's amazing, brilliant. Right, so what we wanna do is to set up the VCO. Now there's a method in the manual which uses a Lisa Jew or, or you could use a scope, but I find the easiest way is to use a guitar tuner. So the suggested note is um, F in the manual. Now you could actually use any note, but I will use F. So I'm gonna go into the highest octave, press F, and then I'm gonna tune it so that it is F with TM5. So at the moment it's D sharp, which is clearly wrong. Right, there we go, we're nearly at F. A little sharp. Go back a bit. TM5 is very sensitive. If you need to, you can use the VR3 tuner, uh, normal, the normal tuning control. Right, so my highest F is in tune. Let's now go and do a lower F. Right, that's F sharp, so that's way out. So I'm gonna adjust the width here to bring this to an F. F sharp, so I'm going the wrong way. Oh, 
Right, that's spot on F. Let's go back up and make sure that we're still in tune here. Now that's gone a bit sharp and that's very typical. You have to go through this process a couple of times to get it in tune. So I'm going to set this back to being F with TM5, the tuning control. Right, that's spot on F, so let's go down two octaves. Right, that's flat now, but it's a whole lot better than it was. So let's set that back to F with the width control. There we go, spot on F. Let's go back up two octaves. Right, that's now flat again, but only a tiny bit. So this might be the last adjustment we need to make. So I'm going to adjust the tuning. Give me back that F. Right, that's spot on F going down two octaves again. Right, that's only a hair sharp now. Spot on F, let's go back up. Spot on F, go down, spot on F. Now the higher octave is just a hair sharp. Now if this was a guitar I wouldn't care about that minor difference, but I, I will try and get it a bit better. Okay, go spot on F. And we go down, is this a bit flat? You do need to do this a few times to get it really good. Let's go back up. Oh, that's even closer, look. Let's see what we can do. Okay, I hardly touched it. Let's put on F, and we go down. And the spot on F as well. So the VCO width is now set. So I'm adjusting the VCO middle point. So I've put the tuning knob back on and I've, I've painstakingly set it so that it is in the middle. I'm going to press middle A and then I'm going to see where that is right it's a little sharp so what I'm going to do is we want the center of this to actually be in tune so I'm going to adjust TM5 which is this black knob here so that the synth is in tune with that in the middle it probably doesn't need much of an adjustment no very sensitive, but now the center frequency of the VCO is in tune. So the next thing is the pulse width. And for that, we do need to use the scope. So what you do is instead of having the sawtooth wave, you have the square wave, and you make sure that your switch here is definitely in the middle because that's manual and you have your pulse width slider here at minimum and then you can measure it let's press a key and then what I do is adjust TM4 so that we have equal mark space ratio now it's not quite 50 50 duty although it is very close it's 49 percent now VTM4, which you need to adjust the mark space ratio, is underneath the, the keyboard circuit board. So what I'm going to do is hold down that note. I'm just going to tweak TM4 until the mark space ratio is perfectly 50-50. And we go nearly that. Yep, 50% now. That was very easy. If you don't have a scope, the ear is quite good at hearing when you've got a perfect square wave rather than a pulse. So we want to set the keyboard tracking of the filter up. 
Now this is even more sensitive actually than the you know, VCO um, keyboard tracking. But I do find that the easiest way is to use the scope rather than the guitar tuner. So I want to set up the keyboard tracking. So in order to do that what you do is turn off all the oscillators, put resonance on full, keyboard tracking on full, and then you set the cutoff frequency so your frequency is in like a usable range so that will go really low or really high it's very sensitive but I'll just pick a value that's somewhere in the middle like there the frequency being reported is 244.5 Hertz so this is the lowest octave so when we go to the highest octave with with two octaves up so if I multiply that by four the frequency that we're aiming for is 978 Hertz Right now we've got roughly one kilohertz, so it's not um, exactly right. I'm going to adjust it here to bring it down to 978. This is very sensitive. And 972. Let's go back down by two octaves. Right, that's now changed. That's 242.9, so multiplied by 4, is 971.6. Let's go back to the higher octave. That's 988. So I need to drop that still a little bit to 971.6. Let's try and see if we can. I mean, you need to make such small adjustments here. 977. That's quite close. Let's go back down. Where are we? That's 241.6 multiplied by 4. 966. Right, that's 977. So we're aiming for 966, so I need to drop it slightly. Right, that's 962. Let's go back down to to the lowest octave. That's now 239.71. Multiplied by 4, we're aiming for 958.8 .8 on the upper octave. Right, so it's 963, which is, you know, what it was just a minute ago, but we need to go down a bit. We need 958. We're homing in basically now on the exact number. If you can get this within 5 hertz, you're doing well, I tell you. That's 239.4 times 4, 2 octaves up, 957.6. Right, and that's 961. So I'm going to leave it there. That's as, as good as you can hope for, I think, with the keyboard tracking. Right, let's switch this off. And put it back together. And there we go, a perfectly in tune MC202. So I hope you enjoyed seeing and hearing how you can adjust a Roland MC202. Maybe you'll do that on your own unit, who knows, or maybe you just enjoyed seeing the process. Thanks for tuning in in any case. Consider liking and subscribing. And see you again in another video soon. Take care.